Hi, I'm Miss Nancy Ruth. I'm a children's minister and the co-founder of Parent Road Ministries. We want to see kids living for Jesus. Hello friends, I'm Nancy Ruth from Parent Road Ministries and I'm so glad you've joined us for some simple ways to include Christ in your Christmas celebration. These are great things that you can do without a whole lot of effort. It's just thinking about what you're already doing to celebrate Christmas. Let's get started. I have with me my lovely Christmas bag and we're going to pull some things out of here to give us some ideas. Ooh, here you go. I like this one a lot. Um, this is one of my favorite parts of Christmas. I don't know if you can see this. This is a candle. I had to tell you as I was pulling all these cookie cutters, I got hungry and ready to make sugar cookies. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so the candle represents the special lights of Christmas. Um, whether you go and tour the neighborhoods to see the special lights or you're putting up your own lights on the tree or um, in our family we have some, um, oh I can't remember what they're called, but they're little wooden things that um, turn around based on the candles that burn underneath. If you remember what that's called, would you put that in the comments so I can remember? <laughs> that would be great. Anyway, any special lights you have, look at those and then talk with your family about the special lights of Christmas. Think about, um, of course, the lights of the stars. We're going to get to that again later. But we also have things like John 1.1, where Jesus is described as the light that came into the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it. This is a great way to pull in the gospel in your Christmas celebrations, which is the gospel is what changes our hearts. When Christ comes to live with us and we live for him, he continues to work in our hearts and sh shape and change us. So let's look for ways to incorporate that as well as Jesus' birth into Christmas. So you have the John 1, 1 with the special lights. You also have things like uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, where Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Um, and with that, we shine a light of Christ. And that light is his love and his grace and the gospel message. And how can we reflect the light of Christ as we live our daily lives through this Christmas season, as well as the rest of our lives? All right, let's see what else is in my bag here. Oh, this is a good one. Okay, uh, this one, whether your family does Santa Claus or not, I bet your family does gifts. So this represents the gifts. Okay, when we're shopping for gifts or we're looking at the Christmas presents under the tree or any of those kinds of things, this is a great opportunity to teach kids some worldview questions. So for example, why do we give gifts at Christmas? And what is the most important gift of Christmas? Is it that iPad that you really, really want? Is it all about getting stuff? It's not. We give gifts because Christ is God's gift to us. And we give gifts to others to reflect his love and as a way to say thank you. It's hard to give God a gift, but we can give others gifts in his name and that's a way that we can honor and serve him. Along with this, you can talk about what did God give us at Christmas? What was the big deal about this baby that was born, this Jesus? And there again, you can pull in the gospel and have those conversations with your kids. Also, you can talk about other ways that you can give gifts other than the presents under the tree. This could be things like food for a food pantry in your area, or it could be serving at a homeless um, shelter if they are serving a meal at Christmas time. I have a friend who his family tradition at Christmas is to go to a local um, soup kitchen, that's the word, and they serve on Christmas Day. I think that's so cool. They bring their kids and all of them serve, and that's the way you can give back, whether it be Christmas Day or another time during the season. Um, something else to think about if your family does do Santa Claus, as your f kids are starting to get to the age where they're about to age out of Santa Claus, a great transition is to talk about where this tradition began. Do you guys know where the tradition began? It actually came, um, tradition says it came from a man whose name was actually St. Nicholas. And he gave gifts of um, money and things that he would drop through the window of um, dowries for young ladies who couldn't afford a dowry to have a husband, a family that had a bunch of girls. And that's something that you can do too. You can talk to them about the origins of this and how the tradition of Santa Claus and the, all the stories and things that came around him actually came from something that really happened 
someone sharing the love of Christ by giving gifts to others. And that's a way you can kind of phase out Santa Claus if your kids are at that age and if your family does it. And if not, that's a great conversation to have around all the Christmas things dealing with Santa Claus. You can talk about where it came from. Okay, so that's Santa Claus and giving gifts and all that stuff. All right, let's see what else is in my Christmas bag. Oh, I like this one too. This one you might even be able to see without my hand. Christmas trees. Um, some of you who may or may not know the tradition of this, this was actually a uh, pagan tradition that was borrowed and incorporated into Christmas. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, depending on how it's used. Because what they did when they incorporated this tradition, they uh, um, incorporated also some Christian teaching. So it was an opportunity to teach the people about Jesus using something that they were already using. So with this tree, one of the neat things about evergreen trees is a live tree, the leaves never turn brown. You guys know this. Well, we can link that to the Lord. God's promises never fail, just like the leaves never turn brown. Also, His promise of the Savior specifically is eternal. It doesn't matter when you live or where you live. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are His, because that's one of God's evergreen promises. Also, if you notice the shape of a tree, how it points up, so it also points our hearts and our minds and our thoughts up to God as we look at our tree. All right, let's see what else is in here. I wanna save that one. We'll come to this one. Oops, I got two. Here we go. Ooh, the angel. That's good timing. Sometimes there are angels up on top of trees and there's angel decorations all over the place. Um, there are lots of angels in the Christmas story. And your kids hear about this from year to year. But as you see the angels, it might be a good idea to ask your kids to tell you what angels are in the Christmas story. And you may be surprised at what they hear and what they say back. Uh, you could also ask them, what was the good news that the angel brought to the shepherds? And that's in Luke chapter two. All right, so there we go. Let's see. Oh, I peeked. I shouldn't peek. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's our star. I was talking to you about the stars a little bit. There are lots of stars in the Christmas story as well. This one is a six-pointed star, and it's called the Star of David. Typically, you see an upside-down triangle and a right-side-up triangle on top of each other. That's called the Star of David. Um, and it's a symbol in the in a lot of Jewish and Israel type things. And it comes from the promises in scripture. And so we can talk about the star of Bethlehem. And um, you may have seen that catchphrase, wise men still seek him. And you can look at the story of the Magi or the wise men in Matthew chapter two. But there's also the star of David. And this refers to God's promise of an eternal king in the line of David. See Revelation chapter 22 verse 16. Also, it refers to God's promise to Abraham. Do you remember this promise where he said, your descendants will outnumber the stars? And he all, God also said, and in you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. You can read that in Genesis 22 verses 15 to 18. And what God was talking about there is Jesus. That's one of the promises of the coming savior of Jesus. And so use those stars to point out how God promised Jesus so long before Christ was born, and he fulfilled those promises and still does today. All right, let's see what else is in here. Oh, I like this one. I like all of these. <laughs> this one is a bell. This one reminds us of the special music and sounds of Christmas. Um, I'm sure your church does some special worship music, and that's a uh, a great way to glorify God, God and talk to your kids about what worship means. Worship means we praise and thank God for who he is and what he does. That's all worship is. And so listen to the special Christmas carols together. Talk about the words when you're driving home from church or the words that you hear on the radio of the Christian songs that come at Christmas. If you're listening to secular songs, this is a great opportunity for worldview discussion. Listen to those secular Christmas songs and ask your kids, okay, what does this song talk about that is true? What does this song talk about that they didn't get right? And what is the truth behind it? Or I should say the correct truth versus what they're um, talking about in the song. Okay, 
Let's see. Oh, I'm looking at my notes, making sure I don't forget anything. <laughs> I think that's it on the special music. All right, let's see. We got two more in here. Let's do this one. I love snow. Some of the times um, I've lived in Christmas, um, at Christmas time, I've lived in a place that got snow, like in Colorado, but sometimes I even lived in Florida where there was no snow at Christmas. <laughs> But even in those cases, there was fake snow. <laughs> now I live in Oklahoma and you just never know. <laughs> but when you see the snow decorations or the actual snow on the ground in the Christmas season, this is a wonderful opportunity to point your kids to Christ. Think of um, that verse. I'm looking for the reference on my notes here. There's actually several. So this especially harkens back to Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 where he says, come now, let us reason together. Your sins were like scarlet, but I shall make you white as snow. White as snow, just cleans us completely clean. I describe it to kids like um, if you went around and rolled in the mud <laughs> and you had a white t-shirt on, okay? It's messy and dirty. Sin messes you up just like mud. But then Christ takes our sins away and washes us white as snow and completely clean and it's gone. So some verses to help you in that conversation might be Romans 3.10, Romans 6.10, John 3.16, and Romans 10, 9, and 10. All right, so look for that snow. Those are great chances to have those conversations with kids. Finally, we have the one you knew was in here, the nativity. The nativity. There are lots of opportunities to see the nativity at church, maybe in your own decorations and um, other decorations around town. Um, this is an excellent opportunity, not just to tell your kids about the first Christmas, but also to have them tell it back to you. That's a great way to check for understanding and for learning. And it's fun, especially if you let them use the pieces of your nativity, if it's child friendly, if it's porcelain, don't do that. <laughs> but if it's child friendly, let them use the pieces to tell you what happened on that first Christmas. And then you can correct them where they get it wrong and then make sure that they understand the key points. But one word of caution with this, never ever ever leave Christ as a baby. He didn't stay a baby. He came for a special job, for a special purpose. And that purpose was to grow up to become a man and to live a perfect and sinless life so that he could die on the cross to take our punishment for sin and come back to life again on that third day. That is the important part of Christmas. It's just not just a baby. It's what that baby was going to grow up to do. He would grow up to fix that broken relationship between us and God. And that's pretty amazing. I'm going to pray for you and then I'll let you go for today. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed Christmas season. Oh, I wanted to tell you, if you're looking for more ideas like this, we have what's called a Kid's Guide to Advent um, on our website. Look for it at parentroadmin.com slash advent. I'll put the link in the description. Also, if you join our e-team newsletter, that's our email newsletter, by today, um, I already forgot the date, but it's in the description. By today at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, then you'll get today's email newsletter for our e-team, which includes an opportunity to get a free copy of the new Advent Nativity devotional for families. It's a weekly devotional. So make sure you sign up for the e-team in time and you'll get your free copy. All right, let's pray and I'll let you go. Lord, thank you so much for this Christmas season. And we don't want to skip over Thanksgiving. We want to thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you've given us as well. Lord, this Christmas season, show us how we can continue to point our kids to Christ in all the things that we're doing. Help us to look for opportunities to have these worldview conversations, to talk to them about what the Bible teaches about Christ and also how others around us may not believe that same thing. Show us, Lord, give us wisdom to know how to share the gospel with our children. We pray that they would come to know Christ in an early age and that they would serve him wholeheartedly all the days of their lives to celebrate Christmas in their hearts every day of the year. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I love you, my friends. I'll talk to you later. Bye.